Hey folks, so today we're going to be checking out XP Pen's Artist 24 display tablet. I'm going to unbox it, we're going to give it a test run, and we're going to see how it stacks up to my Wacom 27 inch uh, Cintiq display. And either way, I'll be giving my full recommendations on the displays. This product was provided by XP Pen, but the words are my own. All right, let's get into this. Now everything is packed nice and snug in here. Just taking this out now. Everything is individually wrapped. XP Pen also threw in this nice wireless shortcut remote. I'll go into a little bit of details on this in a few moments, but uh, of course I appreciate that. And then everything else uh, from the pen, the wires, the hookups, instructions, it's all contained in this easy to access convenient box. So for the main contents of this box, we have a glove, warranty card, I assume some of the mounting brackets, but, uh, a standard Thunderbolt you know, cable. This is just standard hookup stuff. HDMI, C cable here as well. And of course we get the manual and wiping cloth. Here was the stylus itself. It's battery free, has tilt options of up to 60 degrees and over 8,000 levels of pressure sensitivity. Fantastic. Again, pretty much industry, industry standard at this point. So the full range offered for this built on stand is 16 degrees to all the way up to 90 degrees. And of course it does offer both support for Mac and Windows. All right, let's get that plastic off. We'll see how nice and shiny it is and I'll let you know how it kind of feels. Here it comes, breaking the seal. Woo! There is nothing like a new, fresh display screen. Now, one major difference between this tablet and the Artist Pro 24, which is the former model, is the removal of the express or shortcut keys that are alongside the display itself. Now, there is this remote, right, which is, of course, magnetized. You can stick right to it. It's fully programmable, and it allows you to set up even and save different configurations. So if you're switching between different apps like Photoshop, uh, Krita, or Clip Studio Paint, then you can easily save up all your favorite settings. It has fun stickers, you can stick them to the face button so you can remember which is which. The downside, however, is that it is entirely sold separately as far as I know. All right, so it was very easy and straightforward to not only plug this in, but to install the drivers. Usually I typically have some kind of issue with that. Wasn't the case this time. And as of the recording of this video, I have used it for approximately over two weeks. And admittedly in the past, sometimes I just use it for a few days if I'm giving a review for a product like this, but it's been a solid two weeks on this one so far. I have done numerous things like various types of VR. I did sculpting in a 3D coat and of course, lots of drawing and painting. And to further see if it were gonna be a viable option for me in the long term, I even taught my numerous classes on this thing and did uh, approximately 30 student feedbacks and paint overs, like my student Elvira's here, who's a patron, thank you very much. And for a little bit more context here, I've used a standard uh, Wacom Intuos Medium non-display tablet for 10 years, the first 10 years of my career. And in the last five years, I've moved on to the big 27 inch Wacom Cintiq tablet. And besides that being extremely heavy and large, it's been wonderful. So I've used a variety of the smaller budget tablets as well from XP Pen and Huion. You know, like the ones that are non-display and usually, you know, under 12 inches. So my perspective is coming from someone that's used a handful of tablets, but I'm not exactly some big tech head. And to my interest in, into specs and things. All right, so let's do some thumbnail sketching. These are quick, non-committal drawings I like to do before I basically jump into any 
concept, design, or illustration. They're pretty much quick and dirty. They're planning tools. And this one's just for me. Some people out there will say, you know, you should make them pretty. You should spend as much time as you need to on them, which I do agree with for the most part. But for me, this is a really simple, straightforward scene. I'm going to be painting the Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom as I'm highly anticipating that and basically I like to just put a few key things in a thumbnail I like to know the focal point essentially what's being emphasized and I like to figure out the remaining shapes around that focal point that will help create a sense of movement to it so once we have that basically a sense of visual hierarchy will be created in an image at a very early stage and I can then figure out what the image may need or not need from there. I don't like to figure out lighting right away. That would kind of come at a subsequent step. But yeah, we just have Link. He's going to be trotting through some ruins in a forest. I did do a lot of these. I did pages and pages of thumbnails. A lot of this content is going to be available in full on the Patreon link below. But yeah, this is a lot of fun. I love to get back into sketching. And what's great about the XP pen with this is that it has a very thin laminated display. While I know that probably does keep the cost going down, it's great because it you can feel like you're right up against that drawing. The surface has a pretty good texture to it where I can actually feel uh, that natural sense of friction there. Now, uh, that didn't change at all when I went to sculpting. So after I did a sketch of my scene, I did spend a good part of a week basically modeling out and sculpting tons of old ancient ruins that would fit right on uh, theme for The Legend of Zelda. And I'm going to reuse a lot of these assets over the next four to five scenes that I am creating. And it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, it was also featured in the time-lapse video that I uploaded just before this, so definitely check that out in case you missed it. But I basically made myself a whole Legend of Zelda Ruins kit bash set. And it's just old, it's kind of grungy. The software I used was, again, 3D Coat because it helps me get a lot of details very fast. And I basically just import all of those into Blender. And that's what I'm doing here. I applied a very basic material. I just changed the color of it. I didn't get into PBR texturing or any of that fancy stuff for this particular scene. I dropped in a forest HDR photo to help me with the lighting and the colors. And then I just went into my foliage sets and basically populated the scene with a little bit of basic ground cover. I went back and I sculpted a bunch of little Korok guys in the VR. Thought Link needed some friends as he's going to be strolling through the forest. We'll add those in at the end. But yeah, a lot of uh, these tablets, from my experience, typically have like an etched glass display. They're a lot thicker. They're a lot weightier. Um, and they do, of course, drive that cost up. But I do actually like the lightweight thin. I, I don't put a lot of weight or stress when I'm drawing and when I'm essentially making making marks on the screen. I have a very lightweight touch. I have very delicate artist's hands, but I, I'm not heavy handed. Uh, some of you may be, so your mileage may different, uh, be maybe a bit different in that regard. But I do a light touch and this does offer, you know, in the in the config tools to go in, set the sensitivity for yourself and how much pressure you like to put on it. That's of course where you can calibrate uh, the pen and the screen and I'm using three displays this has no problem reading that it's on uh, the XP pen display and the marks are very accurate to where I'm making them so I am enjoying that quite a bit um, with the, the with the Wacom it there is a little bit of that distance between where the or I'm making uh, the point on the screen, the contact point to the drawing underneath. It's not a big deal. I never even really noticed it till I spent substantial time, you know, with this. And as I said before, I do like the feeling and the texture of this. They do offer, of course, extra slip covers and protective screens that you, I mean you could put on any kind of screen. Uh, I didn't do that for this. I suppose I could if I. But I, I didn't even with my my Wacom. That again, that's stronger. It's got the etched glass. But I'm not too worried about this for the reasons that I've mentioned. I don't put a lot of pressure. My hands are very clean, so I don't use the artist glove, which was also included with this. But I know a lot of you guys out there like that. I know some of the artist screens out there. I was in art school. They get gross. They get grungy. 
that's never been the case with me. So if you figure out you, either you, you don't wash your hands as much or if you're, you're, you just sweat or if you do a lot of dragging on your screen, you can get obviously a nice protective display. You could use the glove if that helps you. But I like that feeling of my hand up against the screen and I, at least of two weeks using this has not been a problem. Again, I would love to give a product like this uh, a much longer uh, trial you know, or, or testing period. So I perhaps will follow up in six months, maybe even a year uh, when I'm still using this, if I'm still using it on that overall experience. But I do know one of the great aspects about some of my other tablets is that duration, right? In which they, like I, like I said, I've used tablets for up to 10 years with no problem. And I basically just retire them to get something new. So I am interested, of course, to see how this holds up for the long haul. But as of like just getting into the drawing, doing some sculpting, painting some light on these trees. And that's what I had to do with this painting. Basically, I only got so far in the 3D. I planned out, right, because I was planning, which is something I recommend to all artists to do, plan your images. I planned that I was going to add a lot of the trees and a lot of the foliage essentially in the painting phase because I like painting that. It's kind of relaxing. I'm, I'm weird. It's, it's therapeutic. I, you know, I like to go out walking in nature's, but sometimes I just need to paint some nature. And so that's what's not only helping me pass the time, review this product, but I get a nice sense of peace of mind. So I'm really compounding all of my interests here. But yeah, this is great. I'm using my favorite leaf brushes and I'm just making lots and lots of shrubs, lots of foliage, lots of prickers, lots of branches, and I'm having a great time. And why I love painting this stuff, <laughs> is that there's a high margin error. Like, it's hard to paint a bush wrong. You, you paint someone's face wrong, it's going to look like it. But this, I can paint a bush wrong, no one's going to care. So again, it, it's a great way for me to just kind of relax and unwind. I, I can keep it pretty stress-free. I do have a placeholder, a 3D placeholder of Link over there, which I'll fully get to, to kind of painting him out or in or updating the looks of that um, to make him look a little more Tears of the Kingdom um, uh, you know, appropriately. So yeah, this is great. I, I'm, I'm going to zoom in here. I've, I did learn throughout this process that of course the camera is best suited on the left side, not over my hand. So you can actually see what I'm doing, but yeah, I'm just jumping around to this scene and I'm at this stage, largely adding in what was missing. I got the lighting pretty much corrected in, but I know I have to add some texture to these rocks, which I like that hand painted textureness to it. So I'm not, that's why I didn't texture it in Blender. Cause if you texture it in Blender, the PBR texture, it's going to look very photo real, very fast. Photo real is not my goal here. I am trying to not only celebrate, but to, to really practice my, my own painting. And so the less I have of, you know, doing the texturing part in 3D, the more I get to paint it. And I like painting texture a lot of the times. So that's what I'm doing. And I'm adding in a lot of that grass around the feet, these nice, bright, vibrant greens. And, and that's one thing that I do uh, have to admit with a lot of student work is the balance of saturation in a picture. So I'm actually fighting the urge throughout a lot of this painting to blast the cool blues and the warmth that you know in the yellows and the oranges that I'm feeling from that light throughout the entire painting I am trying just to strategically keep that around that that light that is hitting around Link here the character I'm trying to keep that saturated nice and, and popped in that area again to just really drive home this is what I want to emphasize this is the point of the picture and that just means occasionally I have to go back and desaturate some of the remainder of that painting just to keep my own colors um, balanced, you know, in that regard. But I, I did do a little bit of research online because I know this uh, XP Pen tablet is a follow-up to their Artist 24 Pro series. And from what I did read, that the colors on this display are a bit better. They're a little more calibrated on this model than that previous one. So, and I don't have any firsthand experience on the Artist 24 Pro, but that is what I've gathered. Now, from my perspective on this, there is no real issues on this display at all. Like I'm painting bright, vibrant colors. They look 
bright and vibrant and I love it for it. So it's very effective like that. I think a lot of you, if you try this product or something similar, you would have a great, fantastic experience. So for, for the most part, I've had no issues with this tablet so far. It even offers a degree of rotation on the pen. Now, not a lot of my brushes, not a lot of brushes in general, at least within Photoshop, really utilize the tilt and rotation feature, but this does have it. And there are a few of my favorite go-to brushes that I occasionally really like that feature on. It's not quite as buttery smooth as some of my other experiences have been with some dis uh, display tablets, but it works and it does work well enough. There's just like an occasional little lag that I notice when it comes to rotating it. Not a very big, if anything, not very noticeable at all, but very good nonetheless. Um, the other thing with the, the, the colors, and you can you can choose the saturation, you can you can bump up the greens, the reds, you can do a lot of cal manual calibrating uh, with the color on this display as well. Again, I don't know how many options some of the previous models offer, but this does give a nice variety of them. So if you need it warmer, you can basically make this screen feel warmer, you can make it feel cooler. And I know this is largely too for a lot of people running multiple displays like myself. My one big issue, uh, you know, observation I should say, has been that because I do have these two very nice Dell displays above this, I have a front seat of seeing how the colors compare and match one-to-one -one with these Dell displays. And they're, n they're not quite as deep or rich, if I may say. It, they, are, they are great, and in a vacuum I would never notice, but only because I'm comparing it to high-end Dell displays I'm noticing. It's kind of like I, I have to bump my saturation up for the entire picture at the end by like 10% because things are slightly milky on this comparatively so it doesn't let you download direct color profiles like right like these these monitors all have very specific color profiles and stuff i can't apply that to display or anything i can manually tweak things like i mentioned to adjust uh, and get the colors where i need them to be but they're not quite as deep that is not a deal breaker i am going to still use this thing i'm going to decommission my big wake i'm for quite a long time i don't know if i'll i'll get back to hooking it up but i am going to keep using this display and I've, I've just had to make a few adjustments in my own workflow like I said making a levels layer where I slightly just add a bump in contrast and saturation to my overall file when I'm working on this but for most people it's not it's not going to be a thing it, it's really not a big deal I'm on a very specific margin where I have these expensive displays and my eye has been trained over the last 13 years to really detect these sort of things but by and far the colors are great and I'm very satisfied with the results that I'm getting from this. You'll have to let me know if you're satisfied, if you're enjoying the, if the painting, if I totally botched the colors on it. But I, I think I can get a lot out of this is what I'm saying and I'm enjoying it as well. And of course, it's not going to make my desk bow and bend any lower because it doesn't weigh 100 pounds, which is a huge uh, benefit for me. So I will be taking this on vacation when I'm going away and still need to keep up with my feedbacks. All right, folks. So thank you for watching. If you made it to this point, I've got the finished painting up on screen up to this point. It was a lot of fun. I like the colors of it. I think that, you know, the screen certainly did it justice. I definitely give this a glowing recommendation. I'm going to leave it hooked up. I'm not going to go back and hook up the, the bigger way I come for a while. I want to cut my desk some slack and leave this up and give it some longer testing but I do I uh, think it's a fantastic tablet and will serve most of you well if you missed the last video remember we I do have a time lapse up of this Zelda painting and I think the next one's going to be this flooded ruin scene so if you have any questions about what I did on screen uh, maybe if you want to see some kind of lesson revolving around this upcoming scene, let me know, of course, in the comments below, and I'll definitely try to whip something up. As the new uh, Zelda is right around the corner, I'm stoked as hell. I wanted to show that on camera for tax purposes, if you catch my drift. But overall, yeah, thank you again, XP Pen, for sending the tablet. Really like it, and I'm looking forward to painting some more Zelda stuff. So, I'll catch you guys next time.